is your boy Raider Joe. I'm back at it once again. This is week four. We're playing the Chargers home, away from home, SoFi Stadium. Let's go. All right, so after last week's heart pumping thriller that we had once again, kind of sort of like every week, um, we're back at it again with the Chargers. Now we know to expect probably the same with this game. We have to have the same performance like we did last week or we're not going to win. This is going to be a measuring stick game to see if we are playoff ready or playoff not ready. I'm excited about this game on the offensive side of the ball and also the defensive side of the ball. But overall, I want to see if we're actually a playoff team that can just win. I don't care about how we get it done as long as we get it done. All that matters at the end of the day is if we get it done rather than just pretend like we are good. I'm not satisfied with 3-0. I want to beat the good teams. And it's not like we didn't play good teams. I just want to beat the teams in our division. So when it comes to playoff time, they're not going to be an issue or a concern. I want to dominate. On the week four, I'm going to go over a few key things. My concerns and also the keys of winning this game. My main concern of this whole game or maybe the key to the game as well is the offensive line as usual. We keep on plugging and patching this offensive line trying to make something work out of it. It's kind of concerning but we're kind of making it work. Now it's not all them by themselves. You see a lot of good work by Foster and Monroe. You see the running backs picking up pass blitzing. You see Waller picking up the pass blitzing. You see everyone doing a good job is helping out that offensive line. I'm not sold on Andre James being the center. I don't know about you guys, but Andre James is uh, looking kind of bad day to day. And that's not saying the rest of the offensive line is looking stellar. The new right tackle has been off and on. Leatherwood, he's been off and on, and he's kind of sketchy himself. The only person kind of holding his own is Colton Miller. They have a tough task this week against the Chargers. They got Bosa and company. They like the blitz a lot. We have their defensive coordinator now. We have former players now. Now, it's going to be an interesting game overall, but the offensive line needs to pretty much grow up pretty quick, and this is going to be a measuring stick for them, and this is going to be, you know, what makes them a good offensive line or an okay offensive line or a great offensive line. It's not like last year, Derek Carr is not going to have that time. Maybe this is what is making Derek Carr a better quarterback, maybe making these decisions faster and quicker rather than having all day and having him think about it is actually helping comparisons to previous years. Previous years, he had time to sit back, analyze, and overthink. Now he doesn't have that time to overthink. So maybe this questionable offensive line is making Derek make more decisive moves, making him make the better throws. Derek Carr is playing out of his mind. He's not shaving and neither am I. He's not shaving his head or his beard and neither am I. My second concern is Josh Jacobs. How long is Josh Jacobs gonna play? Is he going to play? Is he just gonna be playing the decoy? We don't know that yet. Apparently he's looked good in uh, practice. We don't know what's really going on. They report a lot of things that kind of mess with the Chargers so they can kind of prepare for Josh Jacobs and then he'll be a scratch or something like that. They play mental warfare. They do that type of thing. Teams do that to one another. It's really weird, but this is what they do. Um, they mess around. We don't know if Josh Jacobs is going to be a full go or is he going to split time with Barber? Who knows? Is split time with Drake? We don't know that yet, but we do know it's very essential if Josh Jacobs came out there, his pass blocking is huge. On top of his running, we need a good running game for this actual game. To win this game, running the ball is where it's at. We all know Josh Jacobs is going to be ready to play, but is his leg or whatever, his turf toe, going to be ready to play that game? And we don't know that yet. Is Barber going to be ready to play this game? We don't know that yet. What we do know is that the offensive line needs to step up, and is Josh Jacobs going to be ready to go? If not, be prepared for a car to throw it for 46 times a game, maybe 50 times a game, which is still not good in my mind. That's like being a pitcher for an MLB team. 
The other key for the game is definitely going to be the wide receivers. They're going to be keying on Darren Waller. I'm assuming that Derwin James is going to be all over Waller. Or they might rotate between Waller and uh, Asante Samuel probably. That's my my theory. They're going to switch off basically. to co- trying to confuse Derek Carr and try to blitz. They love blitzing with Derwin James. They like causing havoc with Derwin James. So I'm assuming that they're going to go that route this game. Sort of like what Mika Fitzpatrick did, the Steelers, when T.J. Watt was in the game. They they disrupted a lot. Once T.J. Watt left that game, the disruption kind of left. Yeah, the wide receivers are going to definitely need to do their part. They're going to use Derwin James. They're going to use Bosa to create havoc. They're a little bit better of team as far as coverage goes for the Chargers, but still the same scenario, and the Raiders need to come off hot, especially the wide receivers. Waller is going to be double covered. You know that. So they're going to be watching him or baiting him into a throw. So more than likely, our wide receivers are going to have to step up. Edwards, Hunter Renfro. The wide receivers need to create separation at the line, obviously. They need to start winning their battles, starting creating havoc like Waller creates havoc. That's the key to success on this one as far as the offense goes if we're going to be throwing the ball. Me, personally, I would pound the rock. I feel like the Chargers are not going to respect the run game whatsoever so they're going to sit back and dare you to run that's what they did last game against the chiefs they sat back and dared them to run the ball i say we pound the rock until they respect it and then throw the ball over their head that's what they're going to do all game i know what they're going to do they're going to blitz and then they're going to drop back and sit in zone that's what they're going to do i see it happening pittsburgh did it for a while until tj watt got hurt it's another key to success but an interesting key to success this defense that we have now not only has it turned around completely but it's ironic that you know you got Gus Bradley you got Denzel Perryman coming in you have Casey Hayward back there all former Chargers last year now coming in to SoFi to come and stop you it should be a chess match it should be very interesting it should be very fun to watch as an NFL fan it's not going to be fun for us because it never is right the defense is going to be really good and really disruptive with Max Crosby and they're going to try to contain him so that means Yannick is going to have to come off the edge and disrupt he needs to you know he's been doing his job he just hasn't been hitting home like Max Crosby has so Yannick is going to step up hard I believe in this game and show out a little bit more Uh, the guys like Quentin Jefferson and also Solomon Thomas are going to step up and show out hard this defense I'm very excited about this game I feel like the Chargers don't respect our our secondary in general and they're going to be throwing the ball deep I feel like that's what they're going to be doing all game long and I'm excited for being Trayvon Morag fan I'm very excited to watch younger guys develop, and I know they can cover these guys. They're wide receivers. Keenan Allen is, you know, a, a deep threat. So is uh, Williams there. He's a deep threat as well. I still think our secondary has the upper hand in this scenario, especially with Casey Hayward. Casey Hayward knows what to expect from Keenan Allen. It's going to be an interesting battle across the field. Reported 70% of Raiders fans being at SoFi Stadium on Monday Night Football. If that's true, then that's that's the X factor of the whole game, having a home crowd advantage away from home. You know what I mean? So having that noise like you're home, but you're being on the road should be very beneficial to the Raiders. So that's an X factor of this whole game on top of everything else that I mentioned. The biggest thing is if we play the Chargers like we played the Ravens, we should destroy the Chargers with no problem. But if we play like we played the Dolphins, we're not going to win the game whatsoever. So that's my biggest problem and my biggest thought. Like, man, are we going to go back to the Dolphin ways? Or are we going to go back or are we going to take another step ahead and just say, these are the Chargers, this is how we're going to handle them. I think we'll be successful overall. I think it'll be a seven point, three point game. It's not going to be a blowout. If it is, I'll be shocked. I really see like a touchdown or a field goal or whatever 10 points something like that but nothing big nothing substantial the biggest thing is is just making sure that we come out to play this game rather than being flat like last game the Dolphins kind of screwed up and woke us up I hopefully we don't have to wake up next game the other things that I would like to see if Cleve Farrell actually steps on the field which he did last game but actually causes some impact this time rather than he did a little 
little bit of pressure, but nothing that we are expecting out of Clay Farrell. So hopefully, and I'm actually rooting for him to actually get on the field and start balling out. And hopefully that's the case. I'll be watching to see if Clay Farrell actually does a good job. The other uh, person I'm watching is Jonathan Abram. He's gotten a lot of crap for being a, a crappy coverage safety. So, you know, let's see what you can do this game. Can you switch off with Moreg or can you only stay in the box? We'll find out this game for sure. He always seems to be trailing behind in certain games and catching up to the ball rather than staying with the ball and keeping his eyes on the ball, kind of like Moreg does. He kind of, you know, stays in front of that ball and makes sure it doesn't get too far over his head. But we'll find out this game for sure if Abram can stay with the ball, if he can actually cover. That's our biggest question mark. But anyways, that's the end of my video today. I thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. I know you hear this crap all the time, but it means a lot to me. So Raider Nation, do your thing. Share this, retweet this, whatever you do. Put it on Facebook. Wake up your neighbor. I don't care what you got to do, but let me know. I'm out.